Blog Talk Radio. You're tuned in to N5D Radio, the next dimension in radio, where we bring you the hottest, in-depth, spiritual, metaphysical, esoteric conversations and news. Get ready for spirit, body, and mind to expand in three, two, one. One, 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 one. Namaste and welcome to In5D Radio, coming to you from the 99% Quartz Crystal Sands of Sarasota, Florida. I'm your host, Greg Prescott from In5D.com, and today we're going to be raising the vibration of the planet, galaxy, and universe we're going to be doing an impromptu show today as we're closing out the Gregorian year of 2015 and are welcoming in the year 2016. So, without further ado, I'd like to bring on my co-host, coming to you 30 feet away from me, Michelle Walling. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Greg. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the end of 2015 and the beginning of a new year. Indeed. Uh, and there was a lot that went on in 2015 and a lot that's going to be going on in 2016. So would you like to start out with maybe doing a 2015 recap of some of the, the highlights that we noticed? Sure. You know, um, I found myself at the end of this year not really focusing too much on things that have happened in the past, but I do think that it's good to, you know, just to observe some things um, you know, we're not going to cover in depth a lot of things, but I think that the fact that everything in 2015 came to an extreme polarity is uh, definite and definitely an observation of uh, what is happening, you know, the proof that we are looking for as we, as we are really shifting this reality into a new one. Wouldn't you say that's uh, accurate, Greg? Oh, definitely. Um, the, the, and what we were talking about earlier today is how you know, Michelle posed the question, you know, do you think this is going to be something that happens on an individual or a collective kind of um, change? And, and to me, it's, it's, it's both, but it all begins with going within first, and then that changes your own reality. And as more and more people go in, it changes the collective reality. I think that's absolutely the main message of 2015 and the beginning of 2016 is I think that now more than ever we can see how the external reality is simply a collective um, conglomeration of what we are carrying within us because what we are carrying within us is the spark of the one creator. We all are having this experience as an individual spark of one um, conglomerate of energy and we're carrying an individual incarnation uh, in the now moment and we're also carrying individual incarnations from our oversoul uh, in parallel realities. And I think and it's all, what... It's all happening at once too. Isn't that a, tr- a total mind trip? Um, and so what we... What we, what I have found with 2015 is that the more that you work on yourself, the more that you shift and transmute the energies of all of your parallel lifetimes that are happening right now, the more you can experience, the, I think, um, a shift uh, in overall in your in your soul and your in the spark of yourself that's here in this lifetime, and I think that. Um, we have the universe within us, and that is one of the biggest secrets and surprises that I think people that are awakening are going to realize. And uh, so when you work on yourself and you shift yourself, you shift, you literally shift the universe. And the more that someone raises their frequency and vibration and, and brings in more energy into the now, the more it's going to affect the conglomerate of this consciousness that we have and shift it. And uh, so um, I think what we are seeing 
or what I what I saw in 2015 is so many things, so many more things being brought up uh, from within to be transmuted and cleared. And some of us are complete trans transmuting uh, beings. I mean, this is our job. We we are we are here to feel all the energies of not only our past lifetimes but of the collective consciousness consciousness of humanity right now and transmute those energies and it's a tough job because it requires that you feel the energy and the emotion and that you let it out and express it and then forgive yourself for any kind of negativity that you may have experienced because isn't that what we're doing? Well, you know, also, one of the things I was just thinking about, and this is one of the topics we're talking about, or are going to be talking about tonight, is as we change within, our exterior changes. Everything that happens that, that's happening around us is changing. And we're seeing this through what's called the Mandela effect, uh, which are basically glitches in the matrix. And uh, one, of the, one of the prime examples a lot of people are talking about, and this has been a big buzz thing on the Internet in 2015, is the, uh, the Berenstain, Berenstain Bears. A lot of people are saying, hey, I don't remember this being the Berenstain Bears, which is being what's promoted right now. They're all saying, you know, it, it's, it's always been the Berenstain Bears. When did this happen? And there's numerous other one, examples that people are talking about, about Glitches in the matrix. I know you and I have experienced <laughs> quite a few of them. Yes. Remember when we went to that one restaurant where they had all of those pictures of flipping pancakes? And, uh, yes. And we went back to the same restaurant, and what happened? They said it was never there. <laughs> <laughs> and that they were about to remodel and put new pictures, and we thought, well, we'll go back in a couple weeks and see if the new pictures are the ones – from the old, but when we back went back, they had a whole new set of pictures on the wall. And the thing is, when we went there, I specifically remember asking the, the waitress, hey, look at this picture. And Because there, there was a picture of one guy that was like flipping a pancake up in the air in a fry pan, and there's three chefs standing behind him watching, and the guy on the end looked really miserable. <laughs> I know, I we thought, were wow, laughing at really how unhappy he looked. Exactly. <laughs> And so then, it's something and then today, that you know happened, and they know exactly where you were. You have a witness, yet according to the uh, outside reality, it never happened. Exactly. Like today, we treated ourselves to a New Year's Eve lunch, and, and um, you decided you wanted chocolate milk, but then you decided, no, I want to have that yummy strawberry lemonade that they serve. And what did the waitress say? <laughs> they never had it. <laughs> and we've been there several and, and, times just down the street. Yes, yes. It, it's about a mile away from us. It's called Dutch Valley. I, I love the place. But, um, you know, we went there about maybe a month, a month and a half ago, and I had this strawberry lemonade. It was delicious. I think I had like three or four glasses of it. It was really good. And uh, went there today. She's never heard of it. Never had it on the menu. Go figure. Yeah, it's crazy wild and uh you know another thing that we've had is um i've talked about this on my cosmic awakening show is we've had the uh on the oven we've had the the fan uh come on uh, yeah. all by itself we've had a smoke alarm um we had smoke alarm incident uh just uh three or four days ago uh it started my smoke alarm incident <laughs> started uh at least a week ago where it was making that single beep where the mm-hmm. battery was low and I, it was in the middle of the night and I couldn't figure out which smoke alarm it was. I was taking different ones down, throwing them in the garage. Finally that, you know, that's, they stopped. So I was like, well, uh, let me start it up three days ago. You were, you were here, you were awake and it happened. And so we took it down and what'd you do to the, what'd you do to the smoke alarm? <laughs> it was wild. <laughs> Oh yeah, this is yeah, this is the funny part. Is you know, I popped out the battery and as soon as I popped it out, Michelle's standing right next to me, as soon as I popped it out, it beeps. There's no juice going on whatsoever and it's beeping without any battery in it. It's 
just bizarre. And I've talked about my uh, problems with your digital alarm clock in the bedroom going off at midnight when it's not set. Sometimes it would go (laughs) off just once, sometimes twice, uh, like beep, beep. Sometimes it would go off full full on beep, 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 beep until you'd hit it. I said, well, what do you Mm -hmm. do to turn it off? And you said, I don't know. I just touch it. Just hit it and it goes off. It's not even set. (laughs) <laughs> that's so true and when you look at the alarm it's clearly off clearly off but it's going off this anyway is just a myriad of little things now this is what awareness is it is observing your reality being aware of the small little things that happen like yesterday when you were at the beach mm-hmm. oh yeah so I, I go to the beach yesterday. I asked Michelle if she wanted to come with me, and she's like, no, I got my own little clearing I'm going to be doing here. I'm like, yeah, that's that's great. Okay, I'm, well, I'm going to go. I'll see you in a, see you in a little, a little while. No sooner do I get there, I send her a text. Um, this This man and his son were walking along the beach, and the son had a T-shirt on that said, this is just a dream. This is how we're creating our reality because I'm on record for saying numerous times, you know, that that our waking life seems more like the dream and our dream life seems more like reality. So when <laughs> when this boy, he maybe 13, 14 years old, walked by with that T-shirt on, I'm thinking, yeah, this is just a dream. You know, when we go into that um, a sleeping state and we enter the ethereal world, then we're more in touch with reality because when we dream, we're not really, you don't ever catch yourself looking at a watch or you, you don't know what day it is, what time it is. That's reality. You know, we, this, what we live in right now um, in linear time with the Gregorian calendar and, you know, all these numbers that keep us locked into the matrix, that's, that's the lie. And but when you escape that, when you go outside of that in the dream world, that's more closer to your true spiritual reality. Well, and the reason that is true, I have come to the conclusion, is that the third dimensional reality is connected to the fourth. As a matter of fact, it's connected to all of the dimensions. But only in the third is it cut off and separate as far as your consciousness. Now, the fourth and fifth dimensions are tied together. So um, what I think is happening is we are, our consciousness, while our body is, is anchored in the third dimension, our consciousness is surfing the fourth dimension at this time. I really feel like that that's what's happening to me. Uh, it may not be happening to everyone else, but um, the fourth dimension and fifth dimension connection is more real than the third dimension because the third dimension is a holographic uh, creation that is created by the the sub-creators to experience physicality and to be able to move a small piece, one of the smallest, tiniest pieces you could think of, of your consciousness energy into uh, this like matrix to be able to experience. And the earth was... Uh, originally created from from what I understand to be several things. One would be to be a learning school uh, for for beings who want to expand their experience and expand their energy field by having a polarity and negative uh, positive physical experience. And then second second of all, and that would be like descension. You know, you descend into the lower the lower frequency. Almost time, almost like slows down and stops, almost. And then you have that experience, and it makes your oversoul grow larger and larger. It was also created to be a living library of physical life, with the various uh, ways you can be creative to uh, put plants and animals on a planet. And so, when you think about Earth and what it actually really is. People argue whether it's flat or round, but what it really <laughs> is is a hologram. It's an experience, and it is cut off. It is it has an illusion of sep- separation, and I assume that the creator allowed that to happen so that it could it could experience what it would be like like to be cut off from itself. 
you know, we were talking about the flat earth, and Michelle and I both basically agree on one premise that, that boils it down to a nutshell. It doesn't matter. How does it matter if it's flat, if it's round? How is that going to change re- your reality right now, you know? So, matter of fact, I, I remember hearing recently I was listening to a video. It's a three-hour video on the flat earth. I don't think I made it all the way through. I think I fell asleep <laughs> about maybe half an hour, 45 minutes into it. But they made a wonderful point on that video that stuck with me. Uh, they were saying how the earth does its rotation. It spins around, and you know, as it spins, it covers a 24-hour day. And... Uh, and that it spins at the speed of 1,000 miles an hour on, based on the premise that the radius of the Earth is 24 um, million miles, I believe, around, something along that line. Anyway, you know, if it's spinning at 1,000 miles an hour, why is it then that you can take a plane from New York to Los Angeles in, say, five hours, and you're spinning against, you're going against the spin – you should get there a lot quicker if the Earth is spinning 1,000 miles an hour. Conversely, jet planes only go about 600 miles an hour. So you're not, if you're going from Los Angeles to New York, then you should basically, you're, you're not going to get there. You'll, you'll always be lagging. You'll be 400 miles per hour <laughs> lagging in time. So, it, you know, that's one of the points they were making about the flat Earth. And I, I forgot how he tied it into it, but it's a point that makes you question the reality um, of what we've been taught. And I've been a big advocate of question everything. This is one thing that I definitely would question, not saying that the flat earth um, is right or wrong. It doesn't matter to me. But that's just one of the realities of the flat earth that I find very interesting. Yes, me too. And and the way I see the earth is a sphere of all of our uh, essences put together. If you look out at a star, that's what Earth is. It's it's um, all of our light essence that we brought into one particular frequency, the third dimension, and some and, and cut ourselves off. So it would be like looking at one of those UFOs out there that change colors that are just orbs. We're like an orb, but through our physical our five senses we have this reality that we are experiencing and that is the, that's the illusion part and the real part is, is if you really were to look at it um, out in the cosmos, I think it would be um, a sphere full of light and, and that is what makes up Earth's consciousness and Earth, Earth has a consciousness of her own as well that's tied to her monads. So we're all we're all one really. It's all one consciousness experiencing and it's an illusion of separation in my in my opinion. And I think there is a plane, a flat plane that is one of the dimensions that is where we're having our our majority of our experiences. And I think what we're doing in twenty fifteen and um what we have been doing is moving up to a higher plane and it's not that we're pulling people with us as we awaken and raise our frequency it's that we're we're going through the door and we're showing them where the bridge is and if they want to make a choice to move up they can uh, i just want to point out too um we do have open lines i know this is an impromptu show and we launched it <laughs> with like 15 minutes to beforehand um but if you want to call in if you're listening right now and you want to call in and talk to us about anything about 2015 2016 the mandela effect um, glitches in the matrix your predictions on what's to come anything give us a shout our call-in number is 646-716-8890 or if you're listening to this on the archives on youtube Throw your comments in below. Tell us what you're thinking, what you uh, think is going to be coming up, if you've experienced any of these uh, Mandela uh, glitches in the matrix effects. Um, Let us know about that. Well, and um, I don't have access to the chat room right now, so if you do, Greg, if there's anybody that is in the chat room and has any questions, uh, I'll give you a chance to to look at that while while I go over a few more 2015 things. and so we've talked about the extreme polarities and what we've witnessed is a lot of extreme earth changes, especially towards the end of this year. 
I believe a lot of this ex- extreme earth change kicked off with way back in September where we had either earth moved through a wave of energy or whether the wave of energy came to us, whether it was an Oort cloud uh, like Corey Good described in your last N5D radio show, um, is, you know, it's a matter of perspective of, as to exactly how it happened. But um, I think things were turned upside down and topsy-turvy, which is probably the correct way for things to be since things were upside down to begin with. But uh, think, what is happening, in my opinion, and what I see it psychically is happening is the light is in, in, engulfing, encompassing, infiltrating every single living thing in our in our bubble, in our reality. And it is shining light on those energies that are hiding from the dark uh, or hiding in the darkness is a better way to put it. Um, It is bringing things to light. It is showing us what is left in the collective to be transmuted. And uh, what would you, would you, um, what would you say about uh, the energy shifts of 2015, Greg? Well, we noticed some of that, the, the, the changes in people when we went to my parents' house for Christmas. My parents had a bunch of their friends over, and they're all you know in their 70s or 80s, and one guy was in his 90s. Um, and we were there, and the things we were talking about, it, it's amazing how awake and aware some of these people are that are in their uh, senior years. Uh, we were talking about chemtrails and GMOs, and they knew everything about that. They were just talking along with us and as if they'd been chatting about this for, for years. So I thought that was really quite amazing. They were talking about the healthcare system, the political system. Now, they weren't completely they weren't completely understanding of how or why or who they were, but what they were aware of and awakening to is that everything seems to be absolutely backwards. Everything seems uh-huh. to be not in our favor. Everything seems to be a complete challenge and wrong in their reality. The sad part is is that it's really hard to explain to them uh, what what is going to be done about it or why it's coming up or who they are and how how we're going to get through this because it's, it truly seems absolutely um like like there's no way there's no way there's so many things wrong there's no way it can be changed and what we have to remember with several people here is that everyone has their own path everyone has their own reason for being here whether it's to experience whether it's to help or some people are even in the dissension stage where they descended down this is their first time here as an experience, and they're not ready to to go back up. They're just having third-dimensional experiences. So some people are going to be leaving before they actually remember who they are, uh, remember that we're separate, um, that that we're an illusion of separation. But what that really doesn't matter, and and, and that it's good not to focus on that, but what, what we can focus on is the fact that awareness is the first step of raising your frequency because you you get so stuck and mired down into the denseness that that is literally what propels you out because there's nowhere else to go. You know, the the thing that I was most concerned about, um, it, it was very encouraging seeing our seniors waking up, but I, I was more concerned about the youth and the other day, um, my daughter, she's 21, and she she has metaphysical parents, so she has an idea. But she doesn't really go around talking about stuff like this or anything. But uh, I noticed that she, she had a post on her uh, Facebook page from this metaphysical person who, um, <laughs> in parentheses on, at, at the end of his name, said, light worker. And she uh, shared one of his posts. And I also, I posted a uh, picture on uh, the N5D Facebook page, and it says meditation because Google doesn't have all the answers. And she liked that picture too. So 
I guess I guess the kids they're observing, they're listening, they're watching. They may not be talking about it, but they're 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 absorbing it. And I think that's an important point. Also, Michelle, you were talking about um, how there's we have this um, Star Child uh, Facebook page, and you've ran into some pretty interesting uh, people on that page. I don't know if you'd want to use fictitious names or something to explain what's happening or or not, but uh, would you like to share a little about that? Well, I have had some some conversations with um, what I call star children, which are children who are star seeds who have uh, memory, uh, re- regaining memory uh, mostly of who of what their 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 start that they're not from here, and that they have a a goal and a mission and a reason for being here, and they're beginning to question what that might be and trying to come in, you know, full into remembering what they're here to do and how they can serve. Because isn't that really what we're here to do if we realize, if we wake up and we know that we are a, a spark of source for all from the one source and then a source uh, had its um, separation into individual oversouls or monads and we are all connected to one particular monad. There's, I don't know how many monads there might be, but so we're kind of like in soul groups, and when we realize that we're that we're we're one, and whatever we do to someone else on the earth, we're actually doing to ourselves and to the earth's consciousness, and to you know on and on and on up to source. Then we we want to serve. I mean, basically, we once we wake up, we want to serve. And so I'm finding that they're searching for what they're here to to be doing, and um, then there's also the children that. Are, awake, are being born with the third strand of DNA and they can play concert piano in a symphony, you know, at five years old. You know, these exhibiting these extreme superpowers, supernatural abilities, um, and remembering their past lives. So all I've really done right now is, besides having the show with Mary Rodwell um, a while back on the Cosmic Awakening show about these star children, is... Uh, observing that what they're doing is they're holding the immense power, the immense amount of light right now to help the, col- the collective consciousness. And I'm, I'm being tongue, tongue-tied today. I don't know why. <laughs> the collective consciousness to shift, you know, to hold the hold the energy, to bring... They're basically serving as antennas and also transmitters of the higher energies that I was speaking of earlier, especially the WaveX energies these energies have been coming in, you know, coming uh, gradually, but they've really been accelerating. And I think you've got uh, explanation as to why the energies have really started accelerating as it uh, pertains to astrology. Oh, definitely. But before I get there, um, what I'd like to say, too, is what you're noticing on your Star Children page is that the parents of some of these Star Children just are not listening they're not paying attention to their children, and uh, they're turning to some of us that, you know, that as maybe parental figures that they can actually talk to. And also, you know, as I was mentioning with uh, my daughter, uh, Brittany, you know, even when you talk about stuff like that, they may seem disinterested or uninterested. Um, they may seem, uh, you know, distant or far when you bring up some some of these things, but Rest assured, they are listening, and they they do get it, and much much deeper than what we give them credit for, and they're absorbing this information. Now, um, getting well, back to what you're I saying, say oh, was there anything more you'd though? like to add? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think I think it's so individual on an individual basis as to how much you're going to be able to tell somebody whether they're 70 or 80 or 18 or 21. Uh, because of the diversity of the um, the actual souls that are here and what they're here for, not all people are here to have a complete understanding of the bigger picture like we're trying to get and share with, with people through our individual um, experiences. So it's important that when you, when, uh, when you get a little resistance uh, from their fear inside of their whole world, uh, their whole illusion shattering by knowing the truth. When you when you encounter that resistance, it's important to back off and to not shove it down their throat because that is going to um, 
that is going to really bring up some emotional conflict between the two of you that, I mean, I have very strong personal experience uh, with my family. Now, your daughter is a lot more awakened as far as open-mindedness, and she's had some uh, psychic abilities herself that she's um, willingly kind of shut them off for now because what we're seeing, like I mentioned before, as we merge more with the fourth dimension as far as where our consciousness is placed, you know, you can see a lot of scary things if you have a very open third eye, which she does, and it makes you want to to not see it because it's too it's just too much to take in when you're have hormones and you're, you know, a young adult and you're you're trying to figure out why you don't want to have a college degree and spend all that money and go out and try to have a career and climb the corporate ladder and prove yourself better than other people. You know, innately your daughter, my son is the same way. Uh, he just dropped out of college after the first semester and realized that college is definitely, definitely not what he wants to do sitting in that classroom. He already had, you know, 13 years of it uh, in high school and kindergarten, you know, all the way back to kindergarten. And he's, he just doesn't want to do that anymore. And I think the only reason that the young children are realizing, you know, the only reason to go to college is if you want to be, something like a doctor or a vet or a lawyer or whatever, you know, whatever of the big industries that require the four-year degree plus even, you know, the master's and doctorates to be able to do that. That's the only reason why you're going to be going to college. And you know what? All that's going to be blown out of the water anyway when we have the ability to heal ourselves completely and heal others with, you know, our superpower, uh, you know, we've already experienced that uh, healing ability in uh, the pure bioenergy healing class that we took together. So um, I'm kind of mm-hmm. getting off track here, but I just wanted to say that not all not all people are, are going to have the complete understanding of the higher starseed overall picture that we have um, and that I have grown into personally in, in realizing that even, you know, realizing that this is a creation holographic experience that is real because our consciousness is experiencing it, and that's it. Um, and, and, that, and that when we are not in this experience anymore, we're out of this separation polarity. We're instantly connected to who we are and our, all of our higher selves and all of our friends and family on the other side of the veil. But we know that we are here, inserted ourselves here for a reason. And that is to do what we're doing right now, to communicate with others as to what is happening and what we feel. And it's it's hard to describe, really, uh, in words what's happening. But um, the, the astrology has been... <laughs> yeah. Astrology has been, in this dream, the way that you can track time through the stars without having a calendar... And that's what the, um, for thousands or millions of years in this reality, astrology was used because, you know, the whole the whole creation is the whole, uh, the stars and everything, the, the galaxy and everything is all part of this reality that can be tracked as we move. And so um, why don't you tell them a little bit about the apex of where we are in astrology and that kind of explains sure. how things why things are unfolding like they are well one of the things that i've been writing about a lot and talking about on in 5d radio especially when i when i bring on uh, astrologer jim delacoli is pluto and capricorn and for those who don't know about this i'll just give a brief recap Uh, Pluto entered Capricorn in 2008, and it stays there until 2023. Um, The the last time that Pluto was in Capricorn was in the 1700s during both the French and American revolutions. And when you look around what's going on all around the world, you see revolutions in numerous countries. So this is how the history, the cycles of time, loop around and repeat themselves and it's up to us to learn from these mistakes 
Now, when Pluto entered Capricorn in 2008, right on schedule, we saw a collapse of all these banks except for the too big to fail slash jail banks. Um, but hundreds of banks collapsed here in the United States. And uh, currencies are just going berserk all around the world um, one, beginning in 2008, right on schedule. Pluto is known as the destroyer, and it will tear down everything that is not in humanity's best interests. And we're already seeing a collapse of government, governments, religion, uh, money all around the world. And uh, this will continue until the year 2023. Now, I believe it was in June or July we reached the apex of this cycle. And what we're going to see from, this, from that point forward is a, an exponential uh, increase in all of these things collapsing. And we're going to see people, uh, whistleblowers coming out of the woodwork to expose everything that's really wrong with humanity. And we're going to see things start, starting to shape up in humanity's interest. But, I've said this all along too, chances are we'll have to take a step backwards before we take this exponential quantum leap forward to, where, where it's, it's possible in the next few years that life as we know it right now will seem like the Stone Age <laughs> because that's how much technology and things that have been suppressed from humanity, all these things will be revealed and opened uh, to humanity. So, you know, teleportation, anything, replicators, we're looking at a huge changes that will make these days that we're living in seem like the Stone Age, free energy right down the line. So it, it's really exciting. Um, but like I said, you know, temper your expectations because we probably will take a step backwards before we make that huge leap forward. And I don't want to sound like I'm fear-mongering at all cause, because I'm not. Just be safe. Uh, make sure you have your little supplies of food and water and, you know, health supplies and stuff like that. But um, chances are I think the, the, the transition will be more smooth than anything else, um, even though it could get a little rocky. But um, really, really, really exciting days are ahead. And uh, it's, it's all being shown to us via these astro, astrological alignments. Now, I believe that the Anunnaki, this is their timetable too. This is how they know when you know, they're going to return. Perhaps even the Mayan calendar was pointing uh, to these days that we're living in. We were, um, Michelle and I were talking the other day about the Mayan calendar, and I, I, was, I was telling her how in the uh, U.S. Capitol building, there's a circle right up at the top, and they have all these little, um, like, reliefs or uh, artistry kind of paintings and murals or whatever that go in a circle right around there. And one of them shows clearly the Mayan calendar. Now, the U.S. Capitol building was built in the late 1700s. What did they know about the Mayan calendar and the times that we're living in right now? To put that into the U.S. Capitol building then, and how has time been misconstrued or um, maybe even um, hidden the actual time that we're living in right now through the interpretation of the Gregorian calendar uh, once they, they transferred over from the Julian to the Gregorian? Who knows how many days or years got lost in the translations and all, and how that ties into the Mayan calendar and perhaps how that ties into today and the days that we're living in. Well, Time isn't real. Time has been a marker of a point in time and space. Time can be seen as if you take a bunch of straws and stand them up vertically. So you've got like 20 straws in a row. They're all standing up, okay? And then you take a wave mm -hmm. and you go up to to one and, and down to connect the other. There's waves of um, experience and we, we experience we're supposed to, the way that the creation was made was that we have periods that the light is in control and then we have that wave that goes down and uh, periods that it intersects across the straw and that's a, ch a change. That's the end of the cycle and that's the period that the, you know, the other, the other one comes in control. So you've got um, 
the way to experience polarity in positive and negative over and over and over again. What happened was is that this construct got hijacked and taken over and a and a virus was inserted into the, the matrix, the holographic experience. And so many people well, we had extremely long dark periods and we never really actually made it to the golden age or the light age where the light very few times in the experience for, for very, very far back has it actually been the light uh, in control. I see that we have a caller, um, and this is coming in from area oh, code 845. Okay. I, uh, 845, are you there with us? Did they have their hand uh, up? Area code 8, yes. Oh, eight, hi, 845, you're live on the air. Hello. <laughs> okay. Well, we're going to put you back on hold. Um, if you'd like to call back in, please do. And uh, for anyone that does have a question or would like to chat with us, our number is 646-716-8890. And enter one to, to enter the queue. Okay. And so just to wrap up and finish about the mind calendar, uh, I was listening to an interview that on the basis lecture that Miles Johnson did, and um, the, it was a gentleman by the name of Peter, and I can't remember his last name because I'm really bad at names, <laughs> names and numbers. I'm totally just gone with. But he he said something very interesting that struck me as just wow. I've always said in my try, trying to understand what has happened that there must have been some timeline incursions, some uh, artificial intelligence that's been perhaps working with trying to shift the collective consciousness through their their technology that's tied into our brains to push us on different timelines than we should be on uh, faster than we, you know, in other words, slowing things down and causing us to have miniature time loops within the time loops, almost like a bubble within a bubble. And this guy said, Peter, he said, what if 2012 hasn't even occurred yet? So what if the period that is supposed to be the end of the mind calendar, meaning the beginning of a new cycle, what if all that's been thrown off? What if our time, what if this isn't 2015 beginning 2016 at all? because of some some uh, kind of incursion beyond our understanding, uh, because there is no time, so why can't time be completely malleable? And some of us, anyway, are time jumping, anyway. I mean, <laughs> I've been in the fourth dimension now for at least, I don't know, as far as I can remember the, the weird anomalies, maybe six months, maybe a year, I don't know. But definitely... If I could take a few minutes, uh, Greg, I wanted to talk about what's happened to me in December. Okay. And uh, what? I, yeah, after September, I I, re, I don't even know what's happened. What happened? <laughs> I had you know I had some really really good expansive times in October and November as far as being able to create and and um, I guess channel a a higher perspective of myself and sharing information. And then just in the last two weeks, right before the the solstice, um, things just really changed for me. I think I shifted into another dimension uh, on a consciousness level. And I'm anchoring, I'm holding, anchoring, and grounding here in the third physical dimension. But my consciousness is in the astral realm. And you know... The astral realm is so malleable. It's it's flowy, it's changey creation, and um, I even my dreams have been just so bizarre. And I just felt in the last two weeks, seriously, I've been flat down on my back on my grounding sheet on the bed, um, working through. I, I had like a a burst of a a negative energy explosion. I would call it. Uh, about a week and a half ago where just everything was just getting to me. I just didn't want to be here anymore. I didn't want to experience um, 
I do not want to observe. I wasn't really experiencing the world as it is. We don't have earthquakes where we're at. We don't have flooding. We don't have war. We don't have a lot of things. We do have a lot of control still if we choose to, you know, to be in that reality. But our reality is not so bad where we're at. It's just that, um, you know, being an empath and everything, I've just been observing uh, everything, and it kind of got to me. And I'm just like, you know what, damn it. This needs, I just need to, when, when is this going to end? When can we shift and create a new reality? And so I really went within and hibernated for the last two weeks. I haven't added any other shows. I haven't written any articles. And I've been perfectly happy being in my cocoon on my grounding sheet. I've read some older, older books that I had. I uh, just started um, the a Wave the Dolores Cannon book, The Wave of the Three Vol- the Three Waves of Volunteers. Started that again. I read some of my older channeled books, uh, extraterrestrial books from the Syrians, the Pleiadians. I read a lot of those because it's weird. It's almost like we are I'm reliving a cycle that happened in December of twenty twelve to where for about oh, two God. weeks, two and a half weeks. Mm-hmm. Talk about your pendulum and how you uh, went through your books, too. Oh, I will. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, I went through a cycle of uh, of cocooning. Now, in December 2012, I had the ascension flu, and I thought I, I pretty much was dying, and I probably was, uh, because to move into the fourth dimensional astral realm with your consciousness, you pretty much have to die uh, and leave, because, you know, we never die. We, so you have to, to give up your uh, third dimensional construct reality and move, you know, to in order to move. You have to let go of the third dimension and let go of your third dimensional way of thinking and all the things that tie you to that because that's, that is part of the program, programming to keep us stuck in that reality. So I, um, December 21st of 2012, for two weeks, I had the ascension flu, I was in bed. I couldn't move. I was basically transmuting. I was sweating 105 degree. I should have been dead. 105 degree temperatures, sweating, uh, cold sweats, hot sweats, achy, flu-like symptoms, horrible. I thought I just, I pretty much probably died. (laughs) And it's hard to imagine how you can insert yourself back into the third dimension but still be dead in the fourth dimension. But And that's the only way I can explain it. I feel like for the last two weeks I've relived that cycle, except I didn't have the aches, the, the ascension flu, but I did have the hibernation, just complete one, completely wanted to hibernate and recalibrate. It's a recalibration, and I think what happened is I moved to a different level at the fourth dimension. I, and to do that, you have to move through barriers, okay? And so, you, you know, you have to shift. And I believe that I've really... Um, transmuted a lot of energy within myself that were from past lifetimes or parallel lifetimes that I've had and also from the collective consciousness because it's all within me. And so it, it came to light and it had to be um, transmuted and it was, there was so much work to do that I had to be in bed. And I, I've slept more hours in the last two weeks than I've been awake, I do believe, and it's um so what I did with my pendulum is um when I was trying to choose which book books to read I um I took my pendulum and connected with my higher self and asked my pendulum to show me with a yes or a no as I put it over the book which books would be in my highest and best interest to read at this time that gives me information as encouragement and of understanding of what I'm going through personally. And the three waves of volunteers was the only one out of like ten that I picked up that got a huge yes as to that would be my highest and best interest uh, to read. And that's of course by Dolores Cannon. So that was really interesting. Um, but to just to, to to wrap up in the last two weeks, um, you know, when you have when you have a partner that is experiencing this in a different way than you are, because you know every Everyone is experiencing this in a little bit different way, but then there are also people who are experiencing similar things to you, but then there's someone else who 
is you know like for instance you you've been on a you've kind of been on a pretty good high you felt pretty good and I've been I've, I've not been on a low but I've been on a like I'm not even here mode in bed so could you explain uh, from our experience together as a couple how it is that you deal with the fact that I've you know had to shut myself off from from reality and hibernate for two weeks straight and you know did did you take it personal or uh, you know, no. if I if I was um, if I was snappy or had to expel <laughs> some of that negativity, you know, how do you protect yourself from it? And how what kind of advice would you give other people as as we are experiencing this in a di- in little bit different way? Because you expect that if you were with somebody that you were going to that you're experiencing this the same way. And the the stark realization is is we were we haven't experience this the same way on on some levels and then it's almost like we mm-hmm. come back together again and then we have all these similarities well the most important thing is to allow your 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 significant other your partner your wife your boyfriend girlfriend whatever the space to have that experience without judgment to allow it to happen um and when when Michelle is is in that that little uh cocoon that she makes i uh i end up going to the beach and i do my own work out there i do um what i call my uh walk walk of gratitude and i i go to here here on uh siesta key i go to uh crescent beach and i walk down to this seawall and that seawall is my reminder to uh give out all my gratitude to everything and i i start out by uh, by calling in uh, universe, source, creator, spirit guides, guardian angels, friends and family on both sides of the, of the veil, galactic family and friends, my higher self, and Mother Earth. And I, I go right through them and uh, express my gratitude for leading me to where I am, providing you know health, wealth, abundance, uh, security. And uh, then I do Ho'opono, which um, I, I, I say thank you and uh, for guiding me to where I am so far, and uh, I'll continue to listen with open eyes, ears, mind, and heart. Um, Please forgive me if I don't say this as often as I should. I'm sorry, and uh, I love all of you, each and every one of you. And at that point, I start my walk back towards um, where I came in on the beach, and I ask all of them to do a love bubble meditation with me. And I, I say, okay, take this love that you're feeling within your heart and send out this loving, healing energy to everybody that's here and extend it as far as you want to cover the the planet, the galaxy, the universe, or the multiverse. As far as you want to send it, send that loving energy to everyone. And while, while I'm walking back, I envision several different scenarios, but my favorite scenario is that the whole beach is one big family reunion and if you're in public, try doing this. If you, just imagine that everyone there is related to you. Hopefully, you have a loving family, first of all. But <laughs> but if you imagine that they're all family, you look at people differently. You feel differently, and that energy is going to come out in a more positive way. Not that it wouldn't be positive to begin with, but even more positive at that point. And. Uh, Every thought is energy. So what, when you're walking by people, like what I do on the beach, if I make eye contact with someone, I might smile or say good morning or whatever, but inside I'm saying, I love you. And you feel that love when you feel that they're part of your family. And ultimately, they are part of your family. It doesn't matter what their race, color, creed is. It doesn't matter what they look like. They are all your family. And send them that love. You can do this anywhere. It doesn't have to be on the beach. It could be a, a walk through your local park, uh, just walking through downtown, going at the mall. You can do this anywhere. If you're sitting as a passenger in the car, you can look at the oncoming cars and send them all love, you know, or anybody that you pass or, or that passes you. So uh, that, that's one, a couple of the things that I do when, you know, when I'm giving Michelle her space. And uh, occasionally I'll p- post pictures on uh, my, my Facebook wall of, you know, just a scenery at the beach and, uh, to me, that's that's perfect solitude. That's that's ultimate grounding for me.
affinity for uh, the ocean and palm trees, and I had no idea why, because there's neither in upstate New York in the Catskill Mountains. So uh, about five or six years ago, maybe seven years ago, I had this dream where I met one of my spirit guides. Now, this is after I moved to Florida. And uh, so I'm in my dream. My spirit guide's there. She's, uh, she looks like she's uh, like an American Indian woman, long black hair, white flowing dress. And she introduces herself. She goes, I'm a spirit guide. My name is Tamara. I was so blown away in my dream that I kept saying her name over and over and over again. And, you know, here I am. I have the opportunity to ask my spirit guide anything in the world. All I'm doing is mentioning her name time and time again. I said it so many times that I woke myself up out of the dream. So here it is, like 3 o'clock in the morning. I'm like, oh, man. So I go, to, I go downstairs and I get on my computer because every name has a meaning. So I look up the word camera, meaning, and it means palm tree. So it, it made perfect sense why I've always had that affinity to palm trees, to being in this kind of climate, in this area, specifically where I am right now. And, uh, you know, every time, I see, every time I see a palm tree, I'm, I, I smile and I'm thinking, hi, camera, <laughs> you know. So uh, that's, that's just one, another one of the, you know, silly synchronicities that um, I've experienced uh, throughout my life to show me that I am truly on the right path. And uh, I know that you and I have experienced a number of numerical synchronicities. I know. You know, I've just recently had one with the baking of banana bread, actually twice on two different occasions. But you want to talk a little about uh, numerical synchronicities and numbers and numerology? I do. I just want to finish up before I forget because my I have a hard time keeping my focus. Um, but I just want to explain that. So what I see, and this is my interpretation, is I see that you're already connecting you know, you're already through your astral realm connecting with your fifth dimensional frequency, bringing it here to the third, shining shining the light that way. So everybody has their own different ways of how they're connecting. And some of us, if you're having a really hard time out there right now, you're in the trenches, your boots on the ground like I am, and you're in that fourth dimensional astral realm doing the work. And sometimes it does require for you to just, um, I do a lot of work in my sleep. I do a lot of work in my sleep, and uh, it requires that you be still, that you be present, but you um, you turn your brain off. You know, there's no possible way I could write an article or have a show when my brain's turned off and I'm in my heart space and I'm I'm transmuting. It's not a depression and it's not a darkness, but it's an acknowledgement of energy flowing through your body and uh but you're doing kind of the same thing greg but yours is more of a joyful you're already anchoring the joy and i'm actually transmuting going to the dark places and transmuting so it's very interesting how we're all working together and do you remember in the movie the matrix where um we just watched that the other day it was so cool to watch it again because every time you watch it, you get a whole new understanding. Do you remember when the black cat uh, deja vu thing happened and uh, uh, Neo had seen the black cat uh, repeat itself walking across the room and Trinity said that that was a glitch in the Matrix? Well, you definitely mm-hmm. had that deja vu happen uh, when you were making this beautiful, wonderful uh, gluten-free organic banana bread that you made with the clock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you yeah. went into the so, kitchen. So, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. So um, one day we had we had these uh, six bananas that were getting very ripe, and Michelle was about to throw them out. I'm, I'm like, no, I'll make some banana bread out of it. So, you know, I, I do. I, I decided I'd make one batch, which requires three bananas. So. Uh, you know, we, I get all this stuff together, all this, you know, the, we have this uh, right, or, uh, organic rice flour, gluten-free rice flour, um, all sorts of, you know, all the organic ingredients, got them all together, put it uh, in the oven after I mix them all together, put it in the oven and uh, forgot about it. You know, I set the timer and forgot about it. So 
I walk into the kitchen to check how much time is re- remaining on the clock and uh, on the timer. And as I walk in and look at the clock, it goes from 11.12 to 11 minutes, 11 seconds. I'm thinking, of course, it, it could only be that amount of time. I should have known without even walking into the kitchen. So I go back to my computer to make a post about it, and I look down, and the time is 12.12. So I've got the 11.11, 12.12 right there in the same moment. But that's not all. <laughs> so <laughs> last night, <laughs> three more bananas left over. I figure, okay, I'll, I'll use these up. Because my sister gave me a great idea. She said to, uh, once you, 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 you line the pan with oil, uh, to put cinnamon sugar on the bottom and on the sides of the pan, and then sprinkle some, some cinnamon sugar on top. So I did that. And, uh, <laughs> of course, um, when I did that, uh, <laughs> I look at the clock. <laughs> you already know. <laughs> you already know what time it was when I looked at the clock when I put the bread in the oven. And, of course, it was 11, 11 p.m. It couldn't have been any other time. It couldn't have been 11, 12, 11, 10. Of course, it had to be 11, 11. And so I put it in the oven, set the timer. Once again, I'm curious. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I swear to God, I'm not looking at the clock. I have no idea how much time is remaining consciously. Apparently, unconsciously, I do, because I go into the kitchen, <laughs> I walk in, and once again, it, I look at the clock, and it goes from 11.12 to 11.11, right as I look at it. And, and then I went into the bedroom and told Michelle about that. I'm like, you're not going to believe this. <laughs> once again, what is it What is it about banana bread and, and 11.11? I don't know, but uh, these are the signs that we get. And I know a lot of you listening out there have gone through very similar experiences with uh, numerology and it might not be 1111 it could be one two three four it could be seeing something on a license plate um, certain numbers um, anything that 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 triggers you know your mind of these binary basically codes of your awakening and it's important to when you experience these synchronicities you call call young as a matter of fact he was the first one that actually coined the term uh, synchronicity. It's important that when you experience these synchronicities to pay attention to what you're doing or what you're consciously thinking about or what you've been doing uh, in, in, in the most recent past, but more, more specifically what you're doing at that present moment or what you're thinking about and, uh, you know, use those energies to uh, learn and expand your own consciousness. hmm well, there's a really good article that you just reposted. Um, it's on N5D, and it's called Number Sequences from Our Spirit Guides. And you can mm-hmm. go to N5D, and in the right-hand corner in the search button, you can type in number sequences, or you can type in the whole name. It doesn't matter. It's a really good search tool to be able to find archives on N5D. And uh, they have uh, a list of, you know, one through zero, uh, one, through, one through nine and zero, what, what all that means. But then they also have common number sequences. And um, when you're referring to like 1111, you can take the number 111 in this, in this particular article and it can mean the same thing. And then 111 says, this sign is used to indicate that your thoughts are related to the start of a new cycle in your life. What you are thinking about doing or changing is correct for the new, fa- for the new phase of your life. And um, Drumvalo Melchizedek interpretation of 111 is energy flow. Any energy flow, such as electricity, money, water, sexual energy, etc. And an alternate 111 interpretation is monitor your thoughts carefully and be sure to think about what you want, not what you don't want. This sequence is a sign that there is a gate of opportunity opening up and your thoughts are manifesting into form at record speeds. The 111 is like the light, the bright light of a flash bulb. It means the universe has just taken a snapshot of your thoughts and is mani- manifesting them into form. Are you pleased with what thoughts the universe has captured? If not, correct your thoughts and ask your angels and guides to help you with this if you have difficulty controlling or monitoring your thoughts. Well, you know, when you said your thoughts are manifesting faster than ever. It's not just with 111. It's everybody and everything right now. 
you know, this is why, they, they, you know, those in power and on mainstream media, they keep us living in fear because they know that fear is such a low vibration. And uh, it keeps third-dimensional reality locked into place. But once you get outside of the fear, once you learn how to live without fear, you'll find that your manifesting abilities <laughs> become exponentially more powerful and you'll start manifesting these wonderful things in your life. Even things that are so simple as a, a, the best parking spot at, in a parking lot, which I just, I've apparently mastered that ability. <laughs> yes. But, uh, you, you know, be, be, be very conscious of where you're putting your energy right now. You know, when you hear, we're all going to hear the negative stuff occasionally. You know, you might walk into uh, the store and they have the news on and they're, you know, the talking heads are giving more fear propaganda, you know, and you happen to hear it. Okay, well, you know, you, you hear it, you don't judge it, you release it, you let it go, and you move on. It's it's that it's that simple. Don't get caught up in it, though. Do not get caught up in the fear propaganda. It's okay to talk about it. It's okay to analyze it if you want to, but um, don't lock yourself into it. You know, get back into the, the love mode, and uh, you're really going to find that things manifest much better and you're going to manifest either way, you know, whether it's love or fear. Choose love. Yes. I mean, that's really what what we're learning. For those of, of you out there who are riding this wave right along with the way Greg and I are interpreting what's happening, um, we are learning more than anything right now that – the way that we are going to change the reality outside of us is to practice the unconditional love, forgiveness, and um, totally unconditional non-judgment for what is unfolding around us and to be the observer of it. Because the, the people who are who are acting this play out, they've forgotten who they are. Even the dark ones are from the same source that we're from, and they volunteer to play the role of being a dark, negative, energetic being. So, um, you know, we have to we have to um, understand that we can be in the world but not of the world and be the observer, and that really does help how we deal with what's happening in our reality. I think it's important, too, what you said, that we're both practicing this every day. Practicing, it just doesn't mean that we've achieved anything. We're practicing. Just like everyone else, we make mistakes. You know, no one on, is perfect. But the most important thing to do, when you do make a mistake, learn from it. <laughs> you know, you know, I, you know if, if, if there's any gurus out there or anyone that claims to be, you know, spiritual masters or whatever, you know, 99% of them are as well. You know, they might make a judgment here or there. It might not be a big mistake, but they're making mistakes too. So it's okay to make mistakes. Learn from it and, uh, you know, try, try to make yourself better as well as whoever you're with better, better too. Well, and really what we're doing is we're doing the work of practicing by making what we assume is a mistake, but it's really there could have been a, a higher reaction or choice made but as we do that work, as we experience that, and then we learn that we could have made a, a higher vibrational choice or had a higher vibrational reaction, then we have done work for ourselves that will then affect the collective consciousness and they will be able to tap into that without them having to do that. Isn't that something? Yeah. And you hit the you hit the nail on the head too when you said as we experience that, and ultimately that's what it all boils down to. The Rosicrucians have a belief, and I love this this belief. They said your goal basically in life is not to be happy; it's to experience as much as you possibly can in life, and within those experiences, you'll find happiness. Of course, within those experiences, <laughs> we're also going to find a little judgment and some things that might tick us off on occasion, but learn from it. And you'll also find those happiness moments too, and hopefully many more happiness ones than other, but even if they are the others. Greg, I can't hear you. Can you hear me? I, I, I'm done. <laughs> that's, all, that's all I had to say. 
Oh, I couldn't hear you, okay, for a few minutes there. I hope it didn't cut out on the show, but hmm. it might just be, well, well, you know, considering the problems we had starting the show, we couldn't start the show the normal uh-huh. way. Um, I Solar was dialing flares. the number. <laughs> I was dialing the number on Skype to start the show, and Skype entered two extra zeros, two extra fours, and one extra nine. And so over and over again, I was trying to dial in to host the show and wasn't able to do it. So we <laughs> started like five minutes late. So and, wait, wait, wait! Another glitch in the matrix. So on a different yeah. computer, I tried doing the same thing, and I got the same result as Michelle did. Never had that happen before, and it's not that no, we're not supposed to matrix. start the show. It's just it's it's maybe that AI technology just saying here, let me, you know, because they can insert themselves into the computers and do all kinds of weird things. But sure. here we are. We transmuted it, and we started. The, we you know we we did the show, and we 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 centered and grounded and balanced, and that's really uh, every time we do this when we're faced with something, it. Um, helps the rest of humanity in dealing with what's happening right now, and uh, so we have we talked about uh, 2015, uh, what we have to look forward to in 2016 and beyond is an increase in. At the same time, we have extreme negative uh, polarity. We're going to have extreme, if not more, positive light polarity shining down through around we are basically emanating that and um, i have a little bit more of a fairy tale type ending to what i think is going to happen with the planet Uh, i think greg i think you're a little bit more grounded in realism and knowing that nothing has happened so far to magically shift us out of this um when every year it's been you know uh, prophesized, this will be the year, this will be the year. And so you're not one to want to pinpoint 2016 as the year of transformation, but I am going to continue to, uh, in my, manif- in my. Um, I know that you'd like for it to be, <laughs> but realism, yes. you know. Uh, I wanted and I it think to happen also, yesterday. <laughs> yes, me too. And also, the longer we go, the longer we stay, boots on the ground and do this, the more people will be able to shift. Yeah. That's the thing that we mm-hmm. know we could have done a long time ago, but less people would be uh, changing realities. But what I see for 2016 is a transformation uh, year. I see my recalibration at the end of this year being um, um, a preparation for personal uh, transformation and being able to, from what I hope, will be to finally connect the fourth dimension that I'm existing in with my consciousness with the fifth, the fifth dimensional levels. And that may take a little adjustment for me to get to the higher levels of the fourth dimension because I think I've been teetering on uh, part of the lower dimension and in the middle, if you want to give it a linear perspective as to where I've been in my work. Um, not that I'm not connected to the fifth because we are multidimensional beings and, you know, we're connected all the way uh, to, you know, whatever dimension uh, this universe can go up to. But what I see and what I hope for in 2016 is truly to be able to have one foot outside of time and one foot in the third dimension. Um, Some people will choose to shift all the way to the fifth dimension and not come back. And that's okay because, you know, there's many multiple reasons why you'd want to do that. Some people will leave their body and they will be able to go home. And they, they this body right now is a one, it's a polarity. It's a wonderful thing. But at the same time, it's a prison. So because of our brains and because of the pro AI programming that we have here. Um, so, What I hope to see is some of us being able to bridge the gap into that fifth dimensional frequency of no time. There is no time in the fifth dimension. And to um, meet up with our family and friends and reestablish and remember our connection with Source, what we came here to do, and what the next steps are and to be able to come back into the third dimension and fourth dimension, which which 
the third and fourth are completely tied together. And not only bring more of our light, but be able to share the experiences of what it was like and to be able to help and support everyone who has decided to make that um, experience until we can, as a collective consciousness or until the critical mass is able to shift their consciousness full-time into a new earth. Here, right on earth, we don't go anywhere, but all either all of a sudden or slowly gradual, I'm not sure how it's going to happen, but we will have created new reality with our thoughts. And I hope that we don't have to go through a rebuilding process. In my opinion, I'm going to go way far out, and I'm going to say that I would like to create it instantly, an instant changeover, and not have to rebuild everything that broke down, that dissolved. So, Greg, um, you can uh, add your comments to that if you'd like. Sure. Um, well, you know, I, I'm with you, and everybody that, that is putting their energy into making 2016 the year of complete transformation, I would like nothing more than that, right? Like I said, I wish it happened yesterday, <laughs> But it hasn't, and there's a reason for that. You know, I've, I've had a couple past life uh, regressions, and uh, one of, in one of my past lives, I was a scientist at the end of Atlantis, and uh, I created a bunch of horrible, horrible things. Uh, I was uh, in charge of the genetic manipulation of uh, insects and animals, and uh, it, was, it was horrible, uh, some of the creations that I made. And I remember as Atlanta sank, I was underwater, and I could actually see some of the hideous creations I made. And I kept telling myself over and over again, we can't let this happen again. We can't let this happen again. And it's happening right now. And, uh, you know, so, so from my own perspective, you know, I, I know that I'm a scientist, and I look at things, you know, in a, in a logical perspective. But I also have that woo-woo side of me that's really pulling for, uh, you know, the transformation to happen immediately. Um, matter of fact, uh, this year I had one of the most profound dreams I've ever had, and uh, I was with Michelle, and uh, I was just, I got this vision of this light that just, all I could see was myself, and this light entering, it was it was huge, it was almost blinding, but it was so peaceful, loving, calming, um, and it, it, it was Amazing! Uh, every every wonderful feeling that you could possibly have happens in this instant, and that's how quickly this transformation might be. Now, I have to say too that a lot of my visions that I do have, and I don't get them very often, but often enough, they've either came true, or are have are about to come true. Here's a great example. One time, I, I had this dream. I was still living in Florida. My ex-wife had moved moved back to uh, New York with my daughter. And uh, I had a dream where I saw my daughter and I, we were were leaving this apartment complex and we were going out to my car. And uh, my car looked like a huge Easter egg. It had like a big eggshell over it, uh, you know, Easter egg colored. And it just kind of blew my mind away and I didn't understand what that dream meant. Now, at the time, I was working, had my own uh, business as a child and family therapist and uh, but I wanted to move back to New York to be closer to my daughter. So uh, a friend of mine calls me up, Joe. And he owns a bar, and I used to bartend, and uh, I was a very good bartender. And uh, and he knew that, and he called me up and asked me if I wanted to bartend at his uh, this bar that he's opening up. And I said sure. So I, I tied my business down and uh, prepared to move back to New York, and I drove up there and. Of course, the first thing I'm going to do when I go to New York is see my daughter because I love her so much more than anything on this planet. You know, she's she's my baby. So uh, I go up there and I go to visit her and I see her and I give her this big hug. I thought about it, what day it was. The day I gave her that big hug, the day I went to New York was on Easter Sunday. And uh, that was the Easter egg shell. That was what my dream was trying to tell me. You're going to be with your daughter on Easter this year, whether you know it or not, which I didn't know at that time. Um, So this dream that I had about the light entering my body and just getting this amazing feeling of total unconditional love, peace, 
serenity, everything that that's good in life, that's going to happen in the blink of an eye. So, it, I mean, it could happen while we're having this radio show. It could happen in 2023. I don't have a date for that. Um, like I said, I, I'm, I'm more of the scientist, and uh, I, I don't look at things more on a linear point. I look at, at it more scientifically. I know it's going to happen. I just don't know when. But um, that's just one of the many things that I think that are coming up that we can't put our finger on specifically on a date. But um, if, if, if my dream is telling me what I believe it's telling me, it's, it's going to happen soon. Now, I also, <laughs> I'm one of, the, one of the people that jumps timelines, <laughs> apparently. Um, I had another dream where I had sent myself from 26 years into the future into present time. I believe that was back to that was in 2010 when I had this dream, because um, the critical mass wasn't high enough, and uh, we needed to wake awaken more people so we could be at least where we're at right now. And in this dream, someone asked me, "Who are you?" And I said, "I'm a master copy of myself." So apparently, I sent a copy of myself back into um, present day time to help raise the consciousness and the critical mass of humanity. So. <laughs> when you toss in the scientific side and the uh, quantum jumping <laughs> timeline jumping side, you know that's that's uh, you know one of the reasons why I'm here now. One other thing, and I'll be talking more about this, and we'll talk about this later on. Is um, um, I uh, we're having a conference in Sarasota, and Michelle and I will talk about this later. But I'll be talking a little bit about um, the work I'm doing on my codons. Apparently, we have, according to the research of Greg Graydon, only 22 of the 64 codons in our DNA turned on. And I'm doing a lot of experiments on myself to turn on all my codons because, hypothetically, if all the codons in your DNA are turned on, you can do anything. And the first thing I'm going to do is lay my hands on the earth and hook up my higher self to every higher self that's on this planet and ask them permission to heal them, to turn on all their codons if they want to, and uh, then I'll do the same thing for Mother Earth, to heal her, to clean up all the water, the food, uh, water, air, and food supplies. You know, that, that's, where I'm, that's where I'm putting my energy in right now. And, you know, maybe, maybe this is something that will happen this, uh, in 2016. Because if you do the numerology of 2016, it breaks 2 plus 0 plus 1 plus 6. It's a, a 9, and 9 is my life path number. So realistically, um, you know, if there was a year for this to happen, I'm also 55 years old, you know, it's uh, 11 times 5, you know, 511. So, it's a, you know, you can look at it in a numerolo- numerology uh, kind of uh, frame of mind, and, you know, all the numbers are adding up that this could be a year of amazing, amazing transformation, but... I can't go out on a limb and say specifically whether it is or isn't, but uh, my heart is definitely right there. Well, a nine is also a number of completion. And so 2017 would be a number of one, which is new beginnings. So however it happens, we we must not try to force an expectation of an unfolding of how it happens. But we... And many of us that are here have actually been through an ascension before, a raise in consciousness into a higher vibrational frequency on a planet. So it is a matter of remembering, and some things sound right to us. Um, and however it unfolds, what I do know is that uh, we will have uh, powers, superpowers, abilities uh, restored to us as our DNA is unmutated or act- activated, reactivated, however you want to call it. And um, so I don't know if that occurs gradually. Um, I think the first uh, first the powers of abilities, like I don't want to call them lower, but I mean more common, which would be your psychic abilities, um, your telepathy and things like that, are already starting to unfold as our consciousness is connecting higher with the fourth and fifth dimensions. But... What is really coming that's even more exciting is the perfection of the uh, of the human body, the way it was before it was tampered with, including the um, 
integration or transmutation of the chakras, which comes with uh, a higher mastery level and and shift. I mean, it's something that some people are doing now is uh, removing their chakras, and that is a very advanced level of understanding that I'm, I'm not sure that I'm even ready for right now uh, because the chakras are a place that can be plugged into by the negative beings to, you know, take our energy. But if you're vibrating at a very high level, then that's not going to, uh, it's not going to happen to you. I mean, you're not, you're basically impervious and that's part of a superpower that you can have is to be impervious to the dark. It doesn't mean that you're not going to feel negative emotions or feel negative energy or because we're here to transmute those energies. And we're also here to provide a space for those beings that are providing the negative experience to be able to switch and flip into a positive light experience. So we are having the conference uh, called um, N5D Superpower Activation Conference on February 20th uh, of 2016 here in Sarasota, Florida, and we have seven uh, very high vibrational speakers uh, to talk about how, in their perspective, um, they have exhibited these superpowers. They have seen other people being activated through you know, the light permeating our cells and our DNA, and we are going to talk about the different superpowers that people can have, what levels that they are, and um, how you can uh, activate your own superpowers. This is not something that someone will do for you, but it is something that you can definitely be affected by being around high vibrational people who have love in their hearts and are exuding light that um, is all in service to humanity to help um, someone clear the negative energy in their bodies. And so we have... Greg's going to kick it off with an introduction, and then I'm going to be speaking. And we have um, author Carrie Kara Star Ellis, who's the author of 21st Century Superhuman Book. She ought to have a lot to say about superhuman powers. She's been traveling around speaking on the circuit um, about superhuman powers, and she's really the um, where I got the idea of calling it a superpower activation conference. We have Candace Craw Goldman who is a um, radio, N5D radio show host and a QHHT specialist and had a very special connection with Dolores Cannon in this lifetime. We have Diane Canfield, who's an energy sensitive and uh, psychic and medium and uh, is able to feel the energy shifts and give her interpretation of what codes they're carrying. Um, all of these, uh, she she has a blog that she keeps us up to date on what we are feeling through these energy shifts. We have Darcy Hotchkiss, who is a pure bioenergy healer, and she is um, she is working with uh, Zoran Hochstadter, who is our um, keynote speaker. Darcy will speak first. Um, she's a very interesting. Uh, <laughs> she's a very interesting story. I think you're really going to enjoy hearing where she's been. Um, working in a very high-level position on, as a white hat on the inside. She may not talk about all of it, but you'll get a really good idea of how she came to be a pure bioenergy healer by basically getting healed by Zorin and then becoming a master at pure bioenergy healing. And she also uh, has learned the higher level of the healing class, which is being able to do it remotely. Zorin is a modern-day Jedi. He's an energy master but he's also a human. He's very, very laid back, very cool guy. He reminds me a lot of Greg and I just love his energy and he's going to have a whole lot of wonderful information about pure bioenergy healing, about the times we're in, uh, basically about grounding, centering, um, just all kinds of things dealing with energy. And just to give a little preview of what we are each going to talk about, Um, On January 21st, I'll have a Cosmic Awakening show with Diane Canfield. On the 29th, I'll have a Cosmic Awakening show with Zorin. September, I'm sorry, February. (laughs) Okay, come back in time. Timeline jumping. Uh, February, I know, February 5th, 
Uh, Darcy will be my guest, and on February 12th, I'll have Candace and Greg, and that'll be the that'll be the week right before the conference. So um, I have that to look forward to to share. If if you can't come to the conference, um, you can get a little bit of information from the show. Um, I will be recording uh, the show. I will be recording the conference. We may or may not have live feed at this point. I'm not sure. <clears throat> We're working with a little bit of a budget and, and money constraints, but uh, tickets are selling uh, pretty quick, and we have 150 maximum. So if you haven't got your tickets, you want to go ahead and uh, get your tickets and find a place to stay. I, I think the hotel um, might be more of a challenge than anything, but if you know somebody here or if you can stay in a little sub- suburb outside of Sarasota, you might get a little bit better price. There's plenty of hotels at a really high price. So, um, the, uh, link, the yeah, the link to that would be uh, www.in5devents.com. Yes, and um, let's see what else I wanted to say about that. Um, I'm just really excited about talking about superpower abilities. Um, we all had these when we had, if, if we were here, some people are, this is their first incarnation, they came down from the angelic realm. <laughs> to give a big boost of power right now. But most of us have had past lives, uh, and before the fall in Atlantis, we had these abilities. And um, we need to understand what these are and how we clear our energy body so that we can basically fill our tarot line where our chakras are, fill it with light and mute any kind of control ability that our chakras may have um, for any other being to tap into us because we the light will basically overpower, will vibrate us into a different frequency where nothing will be able to, um, to mess with us. Not only that, but I don't know if it's before or after we shift into a new reality, but we will not age, we will not get sick, we will learn advanced techniques of balancing our energy to keep a youthful, healthy uh, appearance and not be having to eat food. We will only break bread when we feel like it and we will have the utmost of higher vibrational food. So there's many things to look forward to that we'll talk about um, at the conference and on the radio shows upcoming. Mm-hmm. Is there anybody in the chat room that has a question, or is there any callers, Greg? Um, well, we got a couple comments in the chat room. One of our regulars, Gemini Moon, she said, oh, so glad you guys are on today. Happy 2016. Happy 2016 to you too, Gemini. And uh, Brianna Hoke, Hauk, H-O-U-K, says, never been so excited for a new year. So got some... Uh, Exciting energies going on in the chat room. Um, you know, one thing, I, I just, uh, actually there's a couple things I'd, I'd like to touch on real quick. Um, we experienced an anomaly recently. Um, it's just something that we noticed, and I, I, I don't know how, if anyone else has, has been experiencing this, but a lot of the people that we've talked to that have come into our lives have I either had near-death experiences or beaten death at some point? And it's really bizarre at how many people, myself included, I had a stage 3 cancer uh, in 2007, and uh, we were hypothesizing a really fascinating point. Michelle, would you like to talk a little about this? Well, sure, because it ties into my total understanding that I'm I'm living partially in the astral realm by also being in this body while also being connected to the fifth dimension. And that is that um, I've spoken with people, friends that uh, that we've recently met, you know, they've died. They've seen themselves die outside of their body. They've seen their body um, die and then somehow immediately are transformed back into this reality, back, I mean, back into it. So we never die anyway but it is um, a mind boggler. I think I've died several times. I mean, I think I may have died a week ago or two weeks ago, you know. And it's like... In 2012, too. This is, 
and then 2012, I know I died. I think I may have died in a fight in high school. Um, uh, I mean, there's just so many things that we uh, don't know about. That that's, and One thing's for sure is we never die. And it seems like some of us being either avatars, time travelers, you know, that's what star seeds are. They're connected to their higher dimensional selves outside of this uh, matrix. We can reinsert ourselves uh, if we were to die. <laughs> So, and but some people truly like. Let's just give Dolores Cannon as an as a as a, an example. You know, she was done with her physical embodiment, and and she felt that she could um, contribute uh, on a, a higher level um, outside of the body, where she had a little bit more connection to source and understanding, and is able to now reach thousands of people who connect with her on the other side. And she is able to guide them better from the other side. You know, although she did a really good job while she was in body, so I mm-hmm. I don't really like to to call it death, but transitioned right. is a very good yeah. word. And individually, we're all transitioning from one level of the third dimension up to another level of the fourth dimension and up, and eventually. Um, we will all be able to, those who choose it, uh, transition to a fifth dimensional reality. But it's bizarre how it's unfolding and how so many people in our reality just in the last two months, I would say, it has really been screaming in our face that we're talking to dead people (laughs) or people who have transitioned many times and have inserted themselves back into the reality in a way. And it's, it's not, I don't know how to explain it other than that. I guarantee there's a lot of people listening right now or that might be listening on the uh, YouTube version of this that are experiencing the same thing. Or, you know, just try asking around, you know, your friends and family, you know, and you'll find out that a lot of people survived some kind of near-death experience, had a near-death experience, or, you know, something similar. And uh, <laughs> it's quite an odd phenomenon, but, you know, it's something that people aren't talking about. We're just bringing this up to see maybe are there other people out there experiencing something like this as well because it really leads you into a, a really deep metaphysical avenue. You know, if we have already transitioned, are we creating our reality right now? And that brings me to the my other point that I wanted to make, and that's about um, dreams, our dream life. And I know I touched on dreams earlier, but this is, some, this is a really strange anomaly that I've been experiencing. And up until about a week ago, I had never seen an old person in my dreams, everyone is young, even my parents. I, when I see my parents in my dreams, they're probably in their, I'm 55, so they're younger than I am in my dreams. Myself, I'm always in my 20s. If I see Michelle, she's in her 20s. Um, we look young and healthy, and um, everybody, I, 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 everyone is young, healthy, beautiful in my dreams. I, I just, I don't see sick people. I don't see old people. Until last week, I saw my first old person in, in one of my dreams. And she was almost like a guide because all she did was, you know, I was trying to find my car, which could have been a spaceship. Who knows what it was? But uh, I was trying to find my car in one of my dreams, and I was walking down this end of the parking lot. There's an old woman to my left, and she, she told me to walk. It, she said, please, walk ahead of me, you know, trying to be courteous. And uh, I did. And uh, But that that was the only thing she said to me, and it's the only time I've, I ever recall seeing an old person in my dreams. But um, I just found that, that that was really interesting because in our dreams, like I said, this is the closest we are to our true spiritual reality. That what we're experiencing right here in third dimensional reality, you know, this is, this is more like the dream world, and our dreams is more like reality. And that's where we're heading, to where our bodies are perfect. And uh, we are young, eternally young, forever. And, uh, you know, we need to wake up out of the third dimensional dream into our dreaming reality and uh, to to bring this completely to fruition. I think that's the key in uh, 2016 and beyond is um, believing in the dream, that the dream is more real than our third dimensional reality. Well said, Greg, and it's not necessarily the experience that you have of the dream, uh, like because most of them don't make sense, unless you're yeah. a friend of ours um, who is a dreamwalker, and she's literally mm-hmm. creating, uh, she's literally awake within her dreams and creating her dream world as well, which is very, very, very cool. Um, but 
what it is is the merging of the fifth dimensional it's it's the removal of the veil of separation merging the fifth dimensional consciousness into a third fourth dimensional uh physical reality so we'll have a semi etheric body that is full of light but it won't be only when we want to we can manifest we'll be able to manifest this body that semi etheric which is still physical so it's the ability to create a physical body while being in fifth dimensional consciousness knowing that you're um you're always connected to source and always connected to your star family and your guides and angels whatever whatever you would like to call the etheric beings that are in the higher realms that are always guiding and always reminding you of who you are and uh being able to do that without the separation and that's what's dissolving right now. That's what's that's why the walls are crumbling. Reality is just seems completely hysterical. It seems completely dark and it's just crumbling and falling away. And so I encourage everyone for twenty sixteen <clears throat> to hang in there with us to support those who are um, out experiencing things like these floods and earthquakes and uh, just to give unlimited, unconditional love, forgiveness, um, to remember that we're multidimensional, to remember who you are, to remember why you're here, and um, to remember that we're here to anchor in the energies and to help the planet raise her frequency because we are the planet, we are source, we are all one, and we can still have a um, a new way of living on Earth as an individual aspect of consciousness and a higher frequency, being able to manifest a, a etheric body that can be shape shifted, tra- it can be changed how you know however you want, which means you can. Ex- experience it in a 25 year old body if you want of your own template or you can experience it um if you want to just look the same way that's perfectly fine but you have the power of creation and you are much more powerful than you have uh than you can remember and that's what we need to continue to share with everyone in 2016 uh, because so many people are waking up right now, and they're and they're beginning in, in med- middle stages and higher stages of awakening. And so we have to have respect for everyone where they are, and not expect everybody to understand everything we're saying. But yet, at the same time, provide the information for when people are ready to uh, receive it. Now, we have a couple of comments in the chat room. Here's one from uh, Gemini. She says, Michelle, I don't, don't, I don't even feel like I live in the third dimension. What I have to deal with with the third, I'm almost stunned at what I see. You know, the third dimension may be actually be, be part of the matrix that finally, in order to repair everything that's been done by the dark, uh, it may be literally fading away but um, we may not be we may not be in the third dimension like Greg said we may be in the fourth dimension recreating this reality not only for ourselves to have a comfort zone and moving from the third to the fifth but it may be that we're providing this opportunity for those who aren't awakened we're still co-creating this matrix reality Um, so it could it could be you know I definitely it's very hard it's very hard to exist in such a chaotic place and so um but we we could have left i know we could have left and we're here for a reason we're here to support everybody else and it's okay if we take a break it's okay to take downtime turn your brain off it's okay to slip away and but we always have to try to anchor ourselves um because i do believe that the earth being anchored um into the the whatever last vestiges of the third dimension that there is, if we anchor it, we do uh, bring it with us. So meaning that we raise its vibration and help it to transition. I don't know if there's going to be a third dimension in the future or um, we don't really have to worry about semantics. This is just the best way that I have with um, 
words to describe what I'm going through and and, and, and what I can observe and everybody's going to have their own little reality. And I do encourage everyone to share, to share, because there's always going to be somebody out there that needs to hear what you have to, to, to say. I think what uh, Brianna might be experiencing, too, is uh, what we have been experiencing, and that involves what Dolores Cannon calls background people. And the way you can tell if background people are real or not is, like, for example, if I'm on a beach and somebody makes eye contact with me, you know that that chances are most likely is a real person. But there's a lot of what Dolores Cannon calls the, are these background people that are just there. and They're almost like AI, uh, artificial intelligence, that uh, just come and go, and it could be like some slow person driving in front of you in the passing lane, <laughs> or mm-hmm. it could be, uh, you know, just some people that are just mindless and, and, and walking around like zombies, and we've all seen these kind of people, and I think maybe that's, that might be something of what Gemini is experiencing. Um, you know, you, you, you go to, like, for example, you might go to the grocery store, and you look in somebody's cart, and it's full of GMOs and uh, processed foods and all sorts of crap that's not good for you, and you just shake your head thinking, you know, what? where are these people's minds at? Don't they realize what they're eating and how important, you know, the, the food is to, you know, being, you know, important for your soul and, 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 and program helping to program your DNA or unprogram it if you're eating all these uh, GMOs and processed foods. Yeah, and, you know, that in itself is, very polarized because I do believe once you reach a certain level of vibration, you're able to exist whether you put the poisons in your body or not. It's almost like your body becomes a major poison eater, transmuter, really. I mean, you don't want to test yourself. But just by being conscious and making the choices, it's showing the universe. It's showing your oversoul. It's showing the collective consciousness that you choose something different. I think that's the most important thing about what choosing what you eat is saying, I, I do not consent to genetically modified foods and pesticides and chemicals and things like that. <clears throat> I have noticed that we have the ability to go out and have a meal every now and then and we come home and we don't feel worse than we did if we ate an organic meal. And our body will show us. Our body will tell us what's happening. So, you know, we're not going to make um, a big, first of all, we can't afford to go out to eat very much, but we're not going to make it a habit to go out and eat that junk all the time. But we definitely can see that if we're creating this and we bless food and we know we do things that we love and we do things that make us happy, then... It doesn't affect us if we do it uh, things like that every now and then. Don't you agree, Greg? Definitely. And, uh, you know, I've always been a huge advocate of listening to your body. And the prime example I like giving is that when, when, when if you have acid reflux or if you have heartburn, your body's telling you that you have too much acid in your body and you need to bump up the alkalines. But what Big Pharma's telling you is, here, have a Pepsi AC or a Tums or a Rolaids and keep eating the crap that you've been eating beforehand, don't listen to your body, you know, but all you need to do is have a stick of celery if you have heartburn or acid reflux, and within five minutes you're going to let out a big old burp and your body's going to thank you. And now, what you've noticed recently... <laughs> well, you is let out a big old burp. About... <laughs> True. But what you've noticed recently is um, something with your body and you're listening to oh, it, yeah. and it involves gluten. Yeah. Um, I... I have, uh, my body's been transmuting the toxins very well. It works very well, and it does it by uh, giving giving me um, the little red bumps um, that are dispersed, not like a big rash, but just like a little mosquito bites all over that itch uh, that are just the reaction to gluten. And so I cut down on gluten, great, and it just gives me less bumps, so less discomfort. But our body will transmute it. It doesn't mean that there won't be side effects, but it's not going to kill us if we continue to um, increase our vibration. I didn't. I do always want to say um, that when we're first starting out and we're first awakening and we're first changing our diet, I mean, it doesn't mean Greg and I don't eat organic. We do. We do eat all that, but every now and then we can treat ourselves to going out to eat. But when you're first starting out, it is very important to do a cleanse 
to do a complete diet um, assessment and find out what's working with your body and what isn't. And if you eat something and it makes you immediately sleepy and tired, it is it doesn't have a high vibration. And, you know, there's mm-hmm. just so much controversy over foods and things like that. Um, but I do want to say just starting out, yes, you have to, in order to raise your vibration, you have to do that in the beginning. But once you carry the higher vibration and learn to keep the high vibration in your body, it's it's, your body will work with you and allow you to. It's not like because it comes down to like what is organic. I mean, we have chemtrails coming down on our on our gardens, and we're we're watering them with fluoridated water. Our our ground is already saturated with chemtrails and fluoride, and it's not being properly turned over, and the nutrients are lacking. So there really is no true organic food, but it's about making the choice of what would be better for your body right now. To keep yourself in the body, because as much as much as some of us would really like to escape the body and escape this reality and leave now, we would be very, very disappointed with ourselves for not being here during the time of transition and be able to uh, uh, use this template for our new, rejuvenated and um, we have to have a template. All creation has a template. So we're using this template for our new body. So that's why we have to just try to stay in body at this time. You're looking at the red cardinal, aren't you? In that tree? <laughs> I thought you were. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I was definitely in, uh, not in body. I was staring out the window. My consciousness was in the backyard. Um, <laughs> so that is interesting that you just that you caught that. Um, that's usually what I do a lot of times when I'm doing my shows or whatever. It's, that's why it's hard for me to do videos uh, because I'm usually staring off into the corner or outside or whatever, just not really, you know, uh, focusing on anything else. There's nothing else on my mind except what's coming through my mouth, and it's straight from my heart. And uh, that mm-hmm. is that is what I'm here to do. I'm here to speak from my heart. I don't know all the answers. I don't have, um, you know, I may have uh, my own truth, may not be someone else's truth. And it doesn't matter. All I'm here to do is to share my vibration and my experience and to let people know that you're not alone and that, uh, we, you, you know, you're not crazy. <laughs> Things are happening that we can't exactly put words on. And 2016 will be a year That has been, several people have come up with names already. We have the year of transformation. We have the year of activation. We have the year of recalibration. And Magenta Mm. Pixie just came out with a wonderful video saying that this is the year of the crystal activation and the documentation that goes along with it to basically share your... um, share your experiences with uh, if crystals are all activated on the earth, within the earth, um, on the uh, surface of the earth, whatever whatever that may be, right? And within our bodies with light and they hold light and they hold memory and they're all, they all, they already have the memory of everything that's ever happened. So if we can access the crystals and um, our DNA turns crystalline, our cells are crystalline, liquid crystal, then that should be very exciting if Magenta is definitely on target for 2016 being the year of the crystal activation. And I look forward to documenting uh, many more things to come in 2016. I think I'm almost out of my middle to lower astral realm funk uh, to have transmutation and moving on into, um, again, being on that high of fifth dimensional frequencies and higher. Greg, I want to thank you for being a part of my life and for providing the um, the platform to share my experiences because that helps me to fulfill uh, one of the things that I'm here to do. So uh, is there any other topic any that you'd like you. to bring up before we come to a close? I, could, I couldn't be any more proud of you at, at how far you've come since we met at the uh, N5D conference in 2013. You've came miles and miles and miles, uh-huh. and now you're, uh, you know, you're a very well-known personality in this genre, and uh, I'm, I'm so proud of all the millions of people that you've helped. And uh, well, you 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 started it. <laughs> <laughs> you started it. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> 
what I wanted to point out too, I know that there's going to be um, some QHHT practitioners. Those are practitioners of uh, Dolores Cannon's hypnosis technique that will get a kick out of what I said about that red cardinal, because that's part of the, the envisioning the red bird is part of the uh, mm. QHHT induction. So I, I know a lot of people will see that red cardinal. Whenever they see a red cardinal, they'll see that as a confirmation. Do you remember at your parents' house, your mom who has the two masters in culinary arts <laughs> and home, home ec, she made place cards yes. for everyone. Mm-hmm. Greg had to sit at the opposite, not the opposite, but the other end of the table like a Kitty child corner, chair kinda. next to his mother in the corner. And I got stuck at the other end of the table, which is so funny. But do you remember on my place card what I had? There were animals and birds <laughs> and snowmen and Santas. Yeah. I had the red cardinal. Out of all the place cards, I had the red cardinal. <clears throat> and of course. Candace, if you're listening, I, I wanted to give you that special message. I believe that that's Dolores uh, being able to influence, you know, as a part of the matrix, but from the heart center, um, being able to be everywhere at once and be able to talk to many people. And as we close, I wanted to say something about the matrix, too. Um the matrix is consists consists of uh, a binary system of ones and zeros and of polarity and um duality. The new fifth dimensional earth uh is in no time and it is a triad. It is a triple creation. It it uh brings in the mental mind of the binary system is if you want to have a fifth dimensional experience uh tied to a physical experience you bring in the heart so the heart is the 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 seat of where your consciousness is it is your it is who it is the spark of who you are and um, it has been disconnected from the mind and the brain and there's we're going to bring that together in the threes you know if you want to understand this makeup you know, it's three sixes and nines, <laughs> and apparently yeah. eleven elevens. So, uh, do we have uh, a caller, Greg? Okay, great. What we have is well, we have a comment and a question from uh, Brianna in the chat room, and she said, "Not sure how to word this, but I'm very curious how much of most dreams are mere constructs of our 3D mind, and how much are more." such as astral projection, soul traveling, etc. Well, the fourth dimension is still within the construct of time and space. So, it is malleable. It is how um it is how we can create such a construct to be able to have a third dimensional experience or a physical experience. So, it is how much of it is um you know, malleable, all of it. It's it's all. Um, what what happens is the problem with the dream time right now. If you're not consciously creating your dream time, is that you are having an amazing experience um, out there, and you come back, and your brain doesn't know what the hell's happened. <laughs> your brain is like, "What? You did what? <laughs> you were looking for your car, dummy. You were looking for your spaceship. Don't you get it? You know." So. Um, you know, none of it makes sense right now, and that's because there's still that veil of separation that doesn't allow the um, the astral realm or the fourth dimensional realm to communicate with your third dimensional brain, your hard brain, which is how <clears throat> we've been trained to experience this reality. And what we're going to shift out of is more of experiencing it through um, the heart, and which is not thinking so much and not having to explain or use words of any nature. It's just being in the now. And uh, I think that's what we're, we have to look forward to. Greg, you wanted to say something about that? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. The, um, on, on my way to my master's degree, I took a course called the Psychology of Sleep and Dreams. And uh, one of the things I've noticed, first of all, is that you know what they're analyzing in in college is more from a third dimensional perspective. For example, if you have a dream about climbing a ladder, they're going to say, well, that has to do with, uh, you know, maybe a promotion or something, or getting a raise in, 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 uh, at your job or something along that line. But um, 
what I'm seeing is I'm seeing it from a more metaphysical perspective. And when I see a ladder, I think DNA, because that's what the ladder looks like. Uh, so you, you might be seeing a possible DNA upgrade in that dream. Um, so getting back to what Brianna was saying, she, you know, she was curious about how much our, our, of our dreams are constructs of our 3D mind and how much are more beyond that. To me, I, I, I think it all depends. It, it, it can be both, but it all depends on where your mind is at. Now, most people who live in a third-dimensional reality that buy into the fear of propaganda – your, what your mind is going to do is, through metaphor, it's going to um, play out whatever those concerns are that you've had throughout the day. But what you're going to find out is that once you've released all the fear, your dreams will become more metaphysical, futuristic, and uh, that's when you start tapping into the uh, ethereal realm of possibilities, of things that may or may not exist yet. Uh, you'll start to see things, um, futuristic things, like what I was talking about earlier, about that dream I had about my daughter and I walking out to my car and it was an Easter egg and, you know, long, uh, lo and behold, I ended up, uh, you know, meeting my daughter on Easter. And that's, it's important that you keep a dream journal too on uh, significant dreams or any dream um, just so you can look at them. And then, you know, as, as, as you're able to analyze your dreams a little bit more, you know, you can find online dream dictionaries. Um, take a look at them, but also try to look at them from that metaphysical standpoint because not everything that they're, they're going to say on these uh, online uh, dream analysis uh, websites is necessarily from a metaphysical standpoint. So try to look at it, like I said, about the ladder. You know, I had this dream one time where I was standing in the foundation of a house that was being built, and I was standing, I was str- straddling, I was standing on two uh, two ladders, but there were three ladders in front of me. My left leg was on the left ladder. I was straddling the center ladder, and my right leg was on the right ladder. Now, in the psychology of sleep and dreams, they'll tell you that the, if you're in a house or if you're in a car, you are that house. You are that car. Even if you're driving the car, that is you. That car is you. What that dream told me, this is a, a beautiful, beautiful dream too. What that dream told me is that I was on top of three ladders. We're ascending. We're, we're moving to at least three strands of DNA. The house was me, which I interpreted as humanity um, because we are all one. I, I am humanity, and uh, I see us you know, as humanity moving into the, this is our new house. This is the new earth that's being built, and uh, we're, we're moving into a higher strand. There's something that's going to happen to our DNA where it it just gets magnified. So bottom line is, you know, yes, it, it can be both third dimensional constructs. It can be that and beyond. The most important thing is that you, you know, if, if you have any fear within you, learn how to resolve it and you'll find that your dreams become more futuristic and uh, more metaphysical. And uh, you, you'll, you'll see a lot of amazing things, including UFOs, extraterrestrials, Right down the line, I've seen it all in my dreams, and it's it's really wonderful. Speaking of which, there have been a very large increase uh, reported on Facebook of, of uh, UFO sightings and actual footage, almost that almost like if they're they are posing for the cameras uh, in the last week to two weeks that I've noticed. And I don't know what that means. I don't know if that's uh, created for support from the benevolence or if that is part of the um, bring bring um, UFOs out into the forefront so that they can then try to use that agenda for more control, but it doesn't matter. I just thought it was interesting to bring that up. Um, also, apparently in my dreams, I am a bus <laughs> carrying people many times. And uh, I was a ship in the water, one of those big ships the other day. So that was probably more of a spaceship, but my brain thought I was uh, in a ship mm-hmm. on the water. So <laughs> very interesting. That was a good answer, by the way. Well, really they, 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 that. Say that, they say that a lot of uh, UFOs do enter out of the ocean, that there are you know, interterrestrials that, that transfer themselves in and out of the earth through the ocean. So I think you hit the nail on the head. That ship wasn't just a ship. It wasn't a cruise liner. It was more of a probably a UFO. 
Yeah, and also, haven't you noticed, there seems to be, in this duality and polarity, there seems to be two answers for everything. There seems to be like two um, meanings to a particular word. Um, there's not a necess- there's, there's always like what I'm finding is a yes and no. <laughs> it's a yes and no answer to many things. Um, I personally am not documenting my dreams. I tried that for a while, but um, I am really moving towards, and this may may not be completely right or, or whatever, but I'm completely moving towards trying to move outside of time and outside of, of interpretation of the astral realm because I don't know, like Brianna said, I don't know if we're creating it from third dimensional thinking or or. You know, we truly are multidimensional. So. But what I'm doing when Mercury goes into retrograde coming up, because, you know, all the planets right now have been direct, I am, I'm not even going to acknowledge that Mercury is in retrograde. I'm going to say I do not uh, consent to have that as part of my reality because I'm going to anchor myself outside of time. So I'm going to not, I'm going to try to get out of the fourth the fourth dimensional astral realm, the, the dream time interpretation and things. And instead I'm going to be moving um, more towards um, even the opposite of question everything. Think about this. This is just so deep. <laughs> but let's go here for just a second. Yes, we when we're awakening, we want to question everything in our reality because we have to understand that everything has been backwards, upside down, and been used to dominate and control us. But then when you come to an understanding of why it's happening and why there are dark forces and negative beings um, to push humanity, push our understanding into a higher level and where we can say no, what we don't want, then we get to where maybe we shouldn't question everything and we should trust and know that everything is just the way it's supposed to be (laughs) and that we can't question how things are unfolding and we know that on a higher level we're creating everything that needs to happen for us to move forward. So there are definitely two sides to every coin, and I find it very fascinating that there are so many ways to answer a particular question. Now I'm going to – I see there's a Skype call, but the hand's not up in the air. I'm not sure. I'm going to answer it anyway, just on a hunch. Uh, You're on N5D Radio. Hello, Skype caller. Um, Would you like to talk to us? Hello. Okay, and then there's. I wonder if we're having a problem here. with. I wonder if we're having a problem with the way we're hosting it, where we can't hear them. That's true. Well, we'll try this one. Uh, area code three six zero. Are you with us? Uh, can okay. you hear me? Oh yes. yes. Hi. Well, hello. Hi. I just, Welcome I to N five D Radio. Uh, What's your name? <laughs> My name is Beth, and I didn't realize that I was in the queue, but and I don't have a question necessarily, but I'm happy to chat. I came in a bit Hi, late. Beth. Okay. Hi. Oh, oh Beth. And you said your name voices. is Lisa. It's Beth. I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. Lisa. Uh, Lisa, <laughs> welcome to Inside the <laughs> Welcome to Inside the Radio. It's Beth. Is he joking with me? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I had a bad know. connection. I'll call you Lisa. Uh, no. <laughs> that's okay. I'll respond to that. I, I don't mind. That, no, no. Uh, it's so, so wonderful Lisa, you're that. having an unske- a, a, a show at a different time, which is really fun and wonderful. Um, and I was just in the middle oh, of a session you. with a client, and I came out and my partner said that the two of you were having a radio show. So I quickly tuned in, trying to catch the end of it. <laughs> And now you are part of the end. Now you're part <laughs> now, of it. Welcome. You know, uh, things happen in threes. And um, also, uh-huh. uh, you know, so we have three people now on the show, and we have this triad of energy. And what we've been talking about um, on the show, Beth, is glitches in the matrix. And I think that by having the show at a different time, it is throwing a wrench in the in the matrix. It's mm-hmm. like changing things up. So we're trying to, you know, to dissolve it that way. So um, since we have you um, on on the air, uh, why don't you give us, uh, if you can, um, your interpretation of what you think 2016 will be? Oh. 
<laughs> Ooh, well, let's see. Um, oh, that's a wonderful question. You know, my my initial response to that is that because for the past, I think, may, I would say two and a half or three years, I have consistently had this sensation that something is just around the corner, just about to happen. Um, mm-hmm. it, you know, so, so the last time, for instance, was Christmas. I just had this overwhelming sense that something would happen just around that time. Um, and I think that the, that that last situation was the first time that I was able to release the expectation of it, to just say, you know, it's happening the way that it's meant to happen. I don't have to see any large event because many times I think the way that these things occur are, are incremental. We have, you know, so many moments that add up to, to change and that, you know, the things that we feel that we're waiting for this feeling of anticipation, it's actually occurring. It's occurring all the time. Um, Mm -hmm. And when, when I shift my perspective, um, you know, I have moments of clarity where I really see that. Uh, for me, 2015 was uh, quite challenging, really. It was also, I, I have immense gratitude for the things that I've learned. So I think that to answer that question, it would be more appropriate for me to say what my intention is for 2016, which is um, more transmutation more more of more healing, more light, more connection, um, less division among us so that we can stand together as a unit for for what this whatever this is, whatever it is that that we individually define it as, you know it doesn't really it, it, you know the words don't matter, it's the feeling, it's the feeling of it. It's the feeling of come to, coming together uh, collectively as humanity to to uh, assist this planet and this galaxy and the multiverse in whatever way we mm-hmm. can and to get out of the way and for me it's really you know a lot a lot of my work is getting out of my own way you know i just feel like every day i learn i just I'm constantly learning you know i think back to 2 months ago and my impression of uh of my own reality and how different it is even just now. And so I, I look forward to that constant change in perspective and expansion and growth. Mm-hmm. And I think you hit the nail on the head when you said about putting out the intentions for 2016, because everything, all of our intentions, every, every thought has energy. And what we're doing is we're creating reality by the millisecond every intention that we're positively thinking is creating what we're about to experience. And that might be the feeling that you're having right now of something really big is about to happen. We're all feeling that. And uh, it's just a matter of when all of these intentions become manifestations, as thoughts are uh, manifesting quicker than ever right now, um, once they, they, we, we hit that critical mass, that's where the tipping point occurs. And, uh, we're going to see some amazing changes. Michelle, is there something you would like to add? Yeah, I think she also hit it on the head when she said that we are learning how to get out of the way. Uh, when we took mm-hmm. the pure bio energy class with Zoran, the level one, one of the things we had to learn how to do was to turn our brain off and get out of the way and allow the pure source energy to come through our body and learn how to, out of your fingers and out of your eyes, to move that healing energy into the client and you, you any kind of thought that you have or any kind of expectation or any way that you try to um, put any anything into that energy definitely already dirties the energy. And so that's where <clears throat> when you have uh, things like um, Reiki and things like that where you're intending and and putting your thoughts into the energy, you're kind of dirtying it a little bit. You're you're it's not pure anymore. So that was definitely a, an excellent, excellent uh, way to answer that question because uh, 2016 is what we will make it. 
And uh, that's why we need to communicate with each other and support each other in realizing that uh, the more people that make it happen, the quicker it will happen. <laughs> so I, yeah, I really, it really it think that's it great. magnetizes it right as a collective. Mm-hmm. When we get all on the same page, we're magnetizing it. And I love what you're saying about about getting out of the way and and connecting to pure source because I, I I'm a full time energy healer. It's what I do. And I think that anytime anyone is doing that kind of work, it has to be from a pure source connection. We have to constantly reevaluate and make sure that we are getting out of the way. Definitely. I I absolutely agree with that. Um, You know, when uh, we talked about Zorn, who is our keynote speaker at our conference, and he's the master teacher of the pure bioenergy healing, he actually puts on music like Jimmy Buffett or some kind of a music that he really likes and he maybe chooses some gum or something and he puts himself uh, in his consciousness on the beach. So he's not, I mean, he's just going through the motions and knows what he's doing as far as his movement, but his mind is not there. And I was just mentioning on the show that for the last two weeks, I have kind of put myself in that state of stasis, just being in the bedroom in my little cocoon on my grounding sheet uh, listening to videos and reading and meditating and just basically not being being here but not being really being here uh, just so I can recalibrate and be able to cleanse the body to be able to bring more of that pure source energy connection in. So I think that's, a, and that's what I've experienced for the last two weeks. So that's a really good well, question. I, I'm very I know there's a reason why that. you needed to call in. <laughs> oh, yeah. there's. I have to say I'm in contact with a lot of healers, it's one of the things I like to do. If I, if I like what somebody's doing, I just contact them. And there's a, I've noticed a bit of a consensus about what you've just described. People sort of going into a little bit of a hibernation recently. And for some people, uh, a lot, well, for a lot of people, they're talking about the, it, it almost feels like a dark night of the soul, but, it, but different enough. Um, it is preparatory. Different. Yeah, pre- like a preparation. Yeah. Um, yes, a recalibration for sure. That's awesome. Well, Beth, yeah. do you have a website? You know, uh, well, my website is actually just under reconstruction, and we are <laughs> changing. We are changing. Yeah, recalibration, absolutely. <laughs> and as of today, we are changing the name. So I, I, I think Isn't I will that wait. Funny? Yeah. Isn't that yeah, funny? It is. Well, I really well, uh, I really have. Let me ask you this. Have you experienced any uh, glitches in the matrix in this past year? Oh, I think I experience them all the time. Yeah. (laughs) We do, too. We really enjoy sharing them with people. We talked about that if you want to listen to the recording. Okay. So my partner just said don't – he just came and and, uh, tisked me and said don't wait. So the name of my website right now is Love Light Reiki. Um, it doesn't Beautiful. include a few of the modalities that we're doing, um, that some of the new things that we have learned and are putting into practice, including uh, lower fourth dimensional parasite removal on um, people, pets, and homes. So that's the focus of our work right now, and the new website will reflect that. That's awesome. And that's lovelightreiki.com? Yes. All one word. Okay. Okay. Because what what we're doing is we're reinventing the way that Reiki used to be, and we're giving it a new uh, way of getting out of the way, allowing our bodies to channel the pure source energy, and um, learning how to do this remotely, learning how to use our imagination to channel that pure source energy through our body, but in no time reaching someone on the other side of the planet. So that's really oh, yes. cool. But <clears throat> there's there's no end to what we can do. There's no end yes. to what we can do. I really do believe that. And I think, yeah, Reiki um, has been around a long time. And there are, I think, like anything that has been around a long time, it does get a bit convoluted um, to some extent. But it's... It, I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with Reiki at all. It it does it, uh, any, you know, I channel pure source in any energy work that I do, Reiki only being one of them. It all comes from the same place. 
And someone doing energy work can use it either for good or not for good. And it's really just what your intention is. And um, my intention is service to humanity and service to the planet. Mm -hmm. You know what? We actually have a, a question in the chat room that you might be able to help out on. And this comes from Brianna. And she says, I feel as though I may have a calling to be a healer. I want to help and heal people. It makes me happy. But I'm still so new at this, so I'm sort of unsure. Do you guys have any tips for people who want to get started figuring out if if healing is for them? Do you have any tips on how to well, figure I that think out? That, I think that if you feel that way, that right there means that you are a healer. And that modalities, in a way, sort of choose us. So, again, it just goes back to getting yourself sort of out of the way, allowing yourself to recognize the messages as they come in. You know, we we constantly have opportunities to be in alignment with our higher self and the opportunities that, that I like to call it the CEO, is placing in our path. And so it sounds to me like she's on it already and to just I think a lot of people I think there's a lot there's a lot of people out there that um, are healers or were healers in previous lives I I firmly believe that probably most people that are nurses were probably some kind of healer in a in a past life Um, and and if you if you have that feeling innate feeling that this is something you've done then go with it because chances are you have done it Yes, and probably already are in some ways. It's interesting because when I look back on my life, even as a child, you know, I I was always told that I gave great hugs. And it wasn't until I became an energy healer that I realized, looking back, that I was moving energy and doing healing work through hugging. And and so Mm -hmm. I I think that if if someone feels that they're called to be a healer, most likely in many ways they already are. Um, and mm-hmm. to just follow that path where it leads you to the modality that resonates the most. I agree with that, and I think that that's what some people simply came here to, to do, is to, to be, to hold a high vibration, and to affect everyone else's vibration around them. And so a lot of people are searching for what they're here to do, and they're already doing it. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? It is, yes. Well, <laughs> well, well articulated. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being a part of our show, Beth, and for calling in and and for yes. you know putting your intention with what we want for 2016. We have three people here in a triad um, wanting the same thing for 2016, that all of us learn how to create this shift out of this horrible situation and this horrible illusion into one of peace and Um, everyone uh, understanding they're connected to each other and we're all connected to source and what we do to one person we do to ourselves and being able to now live in uh, the feeling of love all the time, the feeling of being supported and uh, knowing that uh, we are experiencing a physicality because we choose to and not because we're stuck. (laughs) We're stuck. So we're becoming unstuck in 2016. (laughs) Thanks for calling. Sounds fabulous. Thank you so much for having me on. Thank you both for the show, and thank you so much for the work that you do. Thank you. And you too. Thank you. And good luck with your website. Oh, thank you so much. Bye now. Take care now. Bye-bye. Bye. I just don't think that we could sum up the show any better than that, Greg. (laughs) Yeah, that was great. (laughs) I'm telling you, it was been a wonderful show. Um, we've gotten a lot out there. We've put a lot of um, wonderful intentions out there. We've talked about a lot of fascinating topics that I'm sure many people are experiencing right now. And like I mentioned earlier, you know, if you're experiencing some of this stuff and uh, you're, you're listening to this on, on the YouTube channel, leave a comment in the comment section because I guarantee other people are feeling exactly what you're feeling. Yes, and I do want to mention um, that uh, manifestation can happen in groups of three and, and more. It can happen in groups of two, and it can happen in one, but it's, it just gets, um, gets multiplied, and we are going to be doing that with our harmonic emergence 
on February 21st, which is the day after the conference. It's a, like an informal meeting gathering on the beach on Siesta Key Beach. We'll have a hula umbrella out there, so you'll be able to find us. It's going to be to the side of the drum circle, more on the public beach. And we're just going to gather together. We're going to have a microphone and an amplifier speaker and just have a short meditation to where we all put our intentions together. We raise our light frequency within us, and together we create a vortex and send that into the earth uh, to help her raise her vibration and to reach all the collective consciousness of humanity to help bring them into um, the awakening and higher understanding of who we are in 2016. So that'll be a way that we can get together and uh, support uh, all of humanity um, with magnification, I guess is the way to think about it. So with that being said, um, Greg, we have uh, more family coming in uh, today. Mm -hmm. That's that's why we're going to go ahead and end the show now and get this uh, yeah. recording ready for YouTube, and I'm going to do a quick video yeah. uh, as an introduction. <laughs> Haven't been on camera for a while. So um, <laughs> thank you all for, for joining us. We yeah. love you all. And um, thanks for uh, those wonderful friends of ours in the chat room. I think it's really funny that uh, you just happened to be on uh, Facebook and heard that we were <laughs> the show. I um, know. Of course, everything <laughs> happens for a reason. We love you. We appreciate your support <laughs> and joining yeah. your energy in with us today. With that being yeah. said. So, yeah, that's going to wrap up today's show. Until next time, I wish everyone love, peace, and abundance in everything that's good in life. Namaste, everyone. Goodbye. <laughs>